Now, suitable for the gynecological knowledge. And this image will be clear with the help of the blend. What operation is done in your trains, which reduce the risk of the intensity enjoy. The disadvantage the puncture point and puncture angle are limited, and some nations may not be able to ablate it. For patients with fitness requirements, I try to avoid the gas enter the uterine cavity after the gasification. Uh, to choose the surface, surface uh, puncture path, a uh, pontoon, pontoonous and uh, nascent recursion, the arterial uh, wall is better than the posterior wall. A uh, uterine position, the anterior position is better than the posterior position. Plenary enhancing, uh, no history of the abdominal surgery is better than a history of the abdominal surgery. But enhancing cannot be uh, ruled out. A transmangina and uh, as uh, the post proclinus. And this is the question. A transmangina is a post war. Post war is better than an anti war. Uh, the location, posture position is better than internal position. Now, because the enhancing is no history of the abdominal surgery, is better than the story of the abdominal surgery. But enhancing cannot be real out. And let's look at the the one inch is this other one is of the MWA tried by the Nampery Scope and combined with the US. And, uh, and, uh, the other one inches can avoid intense time testing and more safe. A uh, suitable for the gynecologist with the Nampery Scope experience can separate the clinical enhancing for patients with different. And my miles. This thing can be abandoned in the largest range. It is more suitable for patients with ovarian signs who need surgery. A disadvantage is increasing patient enjoy, increasing the economic burden of patients. Uh, symptom improvement after the treatment. The warming of the tumor was significantly reduced, and the symptoms of the animal was improved. The quality of life scores was significantly higher. The preoperative of operative preparation. Uh, computing in everything the uterine fibrous types, uterine fibrous and uh, and moist in relation to surrounding tissue and or organ selection of pulcinous pension post test, uh, take out an uh, intru intruding ring, uh, fasting for more than six hours before surgery. Insert the cancer. The swapping process, abdominal scan and the conventional uh, ultrasound uh, to, to determine the pension part and the pension pans must opportunity avoid intensity, blend, hormonal, large blood vessel, avoid the end dimension as much as possible. Intravenous. And NSA on the end, and you know, and uh, local supper can use the need to call in for the NSA. The certain ovulation. 
Again, the antral side got the constant inflation of the mercury, the anode to monitor the echo change and the soaping field diffusion in the ablation room. You can see this. The post-treatment evolution is immediately after ablation. A controlled enhanced ultrasound was performed to observe the extent of tissue narrow seeds after ablation to determine whether the ablation was complete and to confirm the whether supplemental ablation is required. You can see. This is the pre-treatment. This is a post-treatment application, uh, enhanced and result. Okay. A complete ablation, the mockery uh, relation was confirmed to stop. The mercury in ample code was removed. The local compression bandage was applied. The vaginal bleeding was observed. The corner of the cancer was observed. The white signs was observed to be stable and liquid food was honored uh, six hours after the no special treatment. Uh, in after the treat, the impact evaluation of the MRI. This uh, nice range of fibers um, can be well uh, observed. Just this uh, fibers. <clears throat> Advanced impactors, the complications uh, with uh, observed, uh, where is a pain, a vaginal uh, fever, uh, and original bleeding and discharge and infection in testing in June. The case one, uh, this is a uh, uh, MI imaging the between before the treatment. Uh, this is after treatment. The image showed the most of the fibrous was a narrow trip without blood. Uh, profession. This is an uh, intro February with a rich uh, blood supply and the patient had fitting eating requirements. Therefore, a safe uh, boundary uh, should be set aside for ablation rather than aiming for the complete ablation. This, tool, uh, this is uh, a T2, a high per signal uh, uh, fabrics with abandoned uh, blood supply, which she is difficult to ablate. Uh, after six months, the fabric the fabric volume uh, decreased uh, significantly. The case three, this is a uh, trending tool. Let's see a simple measure of my myoma. This uh, uh, is a simple measure of myoma, like, uh, which was uh, absorbed uh, four months after the treatment. The patient uh, success only got pregnant one year late. Okay, so four. This is a, a multiple uterine fibers with uh, intermuscular and submuscular fibers. A prison treatment required high gastroscopy uh, and nephroscopy. After the microwave treatment, the tumor was significantly reduced and the symptoms were significantly improved.
Ở xa mới, ở đầu bên thì chúng ta The MWA uh, return your tunes without damage or penalty or counting a structure. Or don't affect the owing infection and no operation is required. A conclu conclusion, a no method which guidance or penetration path is select selected and patient safety comes, comes first away. Individual, individual's treatment plan should be formulated according to doctors or in technical advantage and the patient's actual situation. Assume ablation is a option for patients, not a alternative due to surgery. Uh, it is very important to choose an op operative and effective treatment for different patients with uterine fibroids according to their disease characteristics. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Joe. Mm. Um, we have a question from the audience. So uh, what is the... Um, how many lesions can be ablated at once and up to what size would you recommend to ablate the uh, lesion? Uh, that's the <laughs> 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 然后这个病灶的大小最大可以多大? 一般来说呢,如果是经皮消容的话呢,或者经到消容,一般我们建议呢,可能不超过,就是因为如果是多发现子宫肌瘤,有的肌瘤很多,但只要它位置很好,没有浆膜下气流,或者是它不需要保护面
The uteroid fibroids is the most common benign tumor in women. The prevalence rate of childbearing age women can reach 25%, and autopsy data shows that the incidence rate can reach more than 15%. According to the growing side, bestolomyoma may lead to various clinical symptoms, uh, just like increased menstruation, prolonged menstruation, sleeping bleeding, anemia, dysmen, and real and low abdominal pain and infertility and so on. Although there are so many patients, but some of the patients need to be uh, cured. We should do the comprehensive evaluation uh, according to the patient, the disease condition and so on. Uh, if the patient needs to be cured, there are uh, many methods of treatment to be chosen. Uh, sometimes maybe the surgical treatment, uh, maybe the intervention or local therapy and the medication. Today, we are focused on the percutaneous microwave ablation. Uh, we are living in the wonderful year law. We have experienced the period of collect trauma, minimal invasive and non-invasive When we talk about the uh, microwave population, many uh, people will be interested in its effect. Let's look at the long-term blowcap case here. Uh, this is the size 18 centimeter myoma. Uh, from the MRI, we can see that the myoma is large. But after ablation, one month later, the myoma became smaller. The same to the a uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound. Uh, before ablation, the myoma is large, and after ablation, one month, the, my the myoma became smaller. Uh, after ablation, the inactivity of myoma was discharged from the vaginal uh, within one month after ablation. Sometimes uh, it, it is the piece of inactivity by myoma, and sometimes it is the whole uh, inactivity of myoma. After ablation, we can see we just left two little uh, small uh, needle holes uh, in the skin. <clears throat> Compared to the long scar after ablation, after open surgery, we can see that the uterine myoma ablation it is the minimal invasive technology. So it's uh, effect is very good. Uh, let's look at uh, the other long term block up cases. This is the, uh, the myoma sized 11 centimeter. Uh, before ablation, we can see that the myoma had been enhanced. But after ablation, the myoma had not been enhanced again, indicating that it is in activity. Uh, one month later, we can see uh, that the myoma had not been enhanced again, and indicates it is uh, ablation completely. And we can see that the myoma became smaller. The same to the three months later. Also the same to the uh, five months and seven months, the uh, myoma became smaller. And nine months after the ovulation, it is amazing that the inactivity of like myoma disappeared. It uh, is up completely. So, the uh, uterine like myoma ablation uh, it, it is a very good technology. From the two cases, we can see that the prognosis uh, of uterine myoma ablation have two ways. The one is the inactivity like myoma is discharged from the vaginal, and the other is the inactivity like myoma is absorbed. So we can see that the uterine like myoma ablation is a, a very good technology. Uh, in order to observe the obtain the, the effect, we should do the preoperative comprehensive evaluation. The first, let's review the anatomy and classification. Uh, we can see in front of the uterine is the bladder, and in uh, behind the uterine is the lectern. Also. We have uh, many vessels and power uh, surrounding the uterine. So we should to protect the tissues and organs during operation. 
uh, which patient can do the ablation? The Chinese guideline indicates that the patient who met all of the following conditions, the histolomyoma is uh, diagnosed by MRI or ultrasound was collected at zero to six by the epiphigo, uh, which magnolia, secondary anemia, uh, abdominal pain, complication, and other symptoms. The patient had no signs of perimenopause. ports. There is a set punctual pass through the abdominal wall. But this patient cannot to do the ablation. But the first is suffering from utilized uh, medical nonsense. Uh, menstruation, prognosy, and lactation, histolomyoma with frigo GLAD7. There is no set percutaneous puncture pass. Uncontrolled acute uh, pelvic inflammation and dysfunction of liver, kidney, and other important organs, and so on. And the patient may be the relative control indications. The diameter of lower section utilized or tropical lymphoma is more than 10 centimeter. It is thematic that the average diameter of utilized lymphoma will be reduced by 40% uh, after treatment. It is greater than 5 centimeter. The lymphoma cannot be naturally discharged uh, through the vaginal after treatment, and the patient had uh, fertility requirements. But most time, we can see that the bowel can discharge from the vagina. So it is the relative control indication. Uh, we also do the uh, looting pre operative uh, patient. The first is the cervical pathology and nuclear examination. The polyoperative utilized contrast enhanced ultrasound and MRI. The comprehensive evaluation the type of utilized lymphoma and its relationship with the surrounding tissue and organs and select a set of of plots and remove the intrauterine device before operation because the IUD uh, it is the metal and it may be transmitted the heat and to injure the endometrium during the ablation. Uh, we should to upload here for more than six hours before ablation uh, in order to the general anesthesia. Then <clears throat> casualization half an hour before ablation, uh, we can clamp first. Uh, before ablation, we should uh, to check the myoma uh, by the ultrasound. And then to open the <clears throat> casualization. And treatment of the basic clutches, and treatment of the basic disease, uh, just like the condition. Because the histolomyoma is a benign tumor, and the treatment should be select ablation. The treatment time should avoid the menstrual period, ovulation period, and premenstrual period. It is best to treat within three days after menstruation before ovulation or within a week before menstruation after ovulation. There are several uh, anesthesia measures to choose. Sometimes if the, patient, if the myoma is small and the ovulation is easy to do, we can choose the local anesthesia. Uh, but most of the time, the local anesthesia is not enough. The patient may be preferred paid. And in this time, uh, we can choose another anesthesia method. Uh, if the patient is sick and the lymphoma is small, uh, we can uh, choose the intravenous anesthesia. But if the patient is weak, the abdominal discoloration may affect our operation. So we should choose other anesthesia methods. And sometimes we will choose the combined lumbar spinal anesthesia. At this time, the patient is awake. Uh, Sometimes the ovulation is uh, uh, small, but sometimes the patient may be uh, vomit during the ovulation and create not so good. If the patient is a uh, typical case, we should treat the intro trochea incubation general anesthesia. It must uh, be the better way. Uh, during the ovulation, the patient may the patient may be uh, sleeping smooth, and the ovulation may be easy to do. Sometimes we will use the during senior mass anesthesia, uh, after ablation, the patient may be feel the 
the all of empty uh, more comfortable. Uh, because we have uh, many methods of treatment to choose, so we should choose the better way to deal with the myoma. If the myoma is the submucosal myoma, we should choose the histoscopy. Also, can choose the microwave ablation. Uh, if it is the intramural myoma, uh, it is the better way to choose the microwave ablation. Sometimes we can choose the laparoscopy, open surgical surgery. And sometimes it's the subcellular myoma, we can choose the laparoscopy. Even the myoma with the pedicle, uh, we can also can choose the open surgery and microwave ablation. So how to deal with the, so do the ablation, let's look at some microwave ablation video. The first, we will do the uh, contrast in has ultrasound. Uh, from the video, we can see that some earlier had been had been enhanced, and some earlier did not enhanced. Uh, in the case that the earlier uh, is a uh, lack but active, and this earlier is the necrosis earlier. So if we want to do the biopsy, we can avoid it, the necrosis earlier, uh, and we can promote the positive rate. And then we will do the uh, microwave ablation. Uh, we can monitor the ablation needle due the ablation, so it is more safe. Because the gas may be affect our ablation, so we should do the ordering uh, ablation. Uh, just like this patient, we can do from the bottom to the up, and then from the uh, left to the right, or from the right to the left and then to cover the whole, the, the myoma. After operation, we will do the contrast enhanced ultrasound again. We can see that the myoma can not be enhanced again. So the, the myoma, uh, had been ablation completely. We will also do the contrast in head ultrasound one month later. We can see that the border, the border is smooth. The myoma had been uh, completely uh, ablation. So the, uh, the effect of utilized myoma ablation is very good. Uh, let's look at some people low case uh, myoma. Uh, this is the anterior wall myoma. Uh, this patient is very good for the beginner because it is uh, very easy to see uh, from the ultrasound. And it is very easy to capture. Uh, but sometimes the uh, myoma is very close to the, the bowel and very close to the abdominal wall. So we should do something to protect this tissue. We can establish the artificial air sites. So we can separate the bowel to the myoma and to the abdominal wall. And the, the water can reduce the temperature of population. So we protect, we can protect the bowel and abdominal wall and other organs. Uh, back in this case, you can see that the myoma had been enhanced uh, first. And then we will do the biopsy and we'll do the ablation. After ablation, you can see uh, that the myoma had not been enhanced again. In the case, that the myoma is, is uh, in activity myoma. Uh, one month later, we also do the, the examination. You can see that the myoma had been restored completely. And we can see that the myoma became smaller than uh, one month uh, before. The same to the MRI. We can see that the myoma had been uh, ablation completely. 
in the effects very broad. This is uh, another uh, anterior wall myoma. Also to do the biopsy and then to do the ablation. After ablation, we can see that the myoma had not been enhanced again. And one month later, the myoma became smaller. And the myoma is, is falling and destroyed. The same to the MRI, we can see that the biomo is a uh, population completely. And the effect is also very good. Uh, this is the myomo in the fountains near the posterior walls. At this time, uh, maybe the myomo uh, is easy to move and, and it is hard to puncture. At this time, we can use the ultrasound block to place the abdominal wall to fix the, the biomo and then puncture, it may be easy to do. Also, we can use some uh, utilize fixture to fix the utilize and then to puncture, it, it, might, it may be more easy. Uh, we also to do the biopsy and ablation. After ablation, you can see that the myoma had not been enhanced again. Uh, one month later, also it indicates that the myoma is uh, completely uh, ablation. The same to the MRI. The effect is very good. Uh, this is the uh, posterior utilized myoma. Uh, because uh, the puncture path may be long and the utilized is easy to move, so in these cases, it is hard to puncture. And how to deal with this? At this time, we also sometimes will use the ultrasound flop to place the abdominal ward to fix the needle line. And then we we'll puncture. Or sometimes we will use the needle uh, line picture to fix the needle line. And sometimes we will switch the, the way. Uh, take transposinal to ablation. And then it is more easy to puncture. And sometimes we, we can avoid the the endometrium to puncture the myoma. And sometimes we cannot choose the, uh, the set the test to avoid the endometrium. We can puncture across the magnesium. But when we retard the needle, we should ablation the needle first and then to retard the needle. Back to these cases, we can see that the myoma had been enhanced. Uh, before ablation, we also to do the biopsy and then ablation. After ablation, you can see that the myoma had been <clears throat> destroyed. And one month later, the myoma becomes smaller and we can see that it is uh, completely destroyed. Uh, this is the subocellus myoma, uh, which is the, uh, the pedicle. At this time, the myoma may be uh, hard to puncture, uh, especially the myoma is small. At this time, uh, we also can use the uh, ultrasound block to place the abdominal wall to fix the uterine and then to puncture. It may be more easy. And sometimes we also can use the uterine fixture to fix the uterine uh, and then to puncture. It may be more easy. But if the myoma is large, sometimes it's not so difficult to puncture. So it is back this patient we also to make a biopsy and then to ablation. After ablation, we can see that the myoma had not been enhanced again. Uh, the same to one month later. Uh, it can take the myoma is uh, ablation completely. Sometimes we'll make the submucous myoma. Uh, at this time, maybe the myoma is small, but the, the bleeding symptoms is very serious. So the patient needed to the with. At this time, uh, because the myoma very close to the endometrium, and uh, sometimes uh, the ablation may be injured the uh, endometrium, especially the, the patient uh, with the impurity requirements. At this time, how to deal with the myoma? Uh, we can give the your lingual, we, uh, Tube to inside the uterine cavity and to inject the normal cellar and then to reduce the temperature and to accelerate the 
endometrium into ovulation may be <clears throat> uh, more sad. Uh, just like this case, uh, case, we should do the biopsy and then to ovulation. And then we can see uh, that the bioma had been destroyed completely. But the endometrium is uh, also very good. Sometimes the submucous bioma may be large. At this time, we can also use the same uh, way to deal with the bioma. Uh, sometimes uh, the needle puncture close the magnesium, uh, we can reduce the ovulation or what and reduce the ovulation time. And sometimes we can puncture the needle far from the endometrium. Sometimes maybe uh, one centimeter. Uh, before ablation, we can see that the myoma had been enhanced again. And after ablation, the, the gas had covered the whole of uh, the myoma. And then we do the contrast enhanced, we can see that the myoma had been destroyed completely. Uh, this is another subnucleus bioma. Also, we could do the uh, biopsy and ablation. Sometimes the myoma had the uh, cyst and can limit the heat inside the myoma. So it is time. Also, we can uh, protect the, the uh, endometrium very well. After ablation, you can see that the myoma had been destroyed completely. And one month later, we can see that the myoma became smaller. The submucous myoma has become smaller, maybe fast than other kinds of myoma after ablation. Uh, the same to the MRI, we can see before ablation, after ablation, the myoma became smaller and uh, indicates that the myoma had been completely destroyed. Sometimes we will make the multiple myoma. We not only can do the single myoma, we also can do the multiple myoma. Just like this patient, uh, uh, we can see it. He, here is the myoma, here is another one. We also do the biopsy and ablation. After ablation, you can see uh, that the myoma had not been enhanced again. Uh, the small, the large uh, myoma uh, also be destroyed. <clears throat> At one time, uh, some people may ask me if the uh, Marty myoma uh, use the set low ablation needle. Uh, that's no. We just uh, use one or two ablation needle to do all of the myomas. From the MR, you can see there are set low myoma. We to do ablation after ablation. We can see that the myoma had all been destroyed. The same to other ablation, the uh, utilize my ablation uh, maybe make the complications uh, just like the thermal injury of intestine, bladder, and other organs. Uh, the pain after ablation, bleeding and pelvic effusion, and large area thermal injury or endometrium, and so on. But most of the complications can be <clears throat> prevented and avoided. Here is some prevention and treatment of common uh, complications. The hemolysis, uh, we can use the hemostatic drum before and after ablation. Uh, we also can use it ourselves to find the bleeding vessel and use the ablation needle to puncture inside the, the bleeding vessel. And to ablation, we also can stop the bleeding. The acute visceral failure. Uh, especially the big uh, my momo may be make uh, this complication. And we should to do uh, preoperative rehydration 1,000 and or 2,000 uh, millimeter. Sometimes we will use the you will also need uh, 10 to uh, 20 mg was given during operation. Observe the utilized volume. If the utilized volume is less we can add the amount of uh, to so uh, mic. Sometimes we will use the sodium bicarbonate, uh, maybe uh, 125 milli milliliter. Sometimes the patient will make the, uh, the hyperflow 
in Neo. We can uh, use some intravenous albumin uh, supplementation. And we can also strengthen nutrition of the support. Sometimes we we'll make the uh, pelvic infusion uh, which use the antibiotics uh, before and uh, after ablation. And we should focus on the solar operation. Uh, with, uh, to prevent and avoid the complication, we sometimes can use the assisted ablation technology. The first is the established artificial air sites. Uh, sometimes we we'll use the, the PDC needle to puncture inside the uh, abdominal cavity and to uh, inject the normal cellar. Uh, after we establish the artificial air site, we can see that the power is separated from the myoma. And it is sometimes the myoma is blocked in the water. So it's time to ablation is very sad. Uh, we also to <clears throat> promote our puncture technology and to uh, promote our needle layout scheme. If the myoma is close to the tensile area, we can reduce the power and to uh, avoid to uh, bond the, the tensile areas. Uh, sometimes to protect the endometrium, we can use the uh, urinary tester and to uh, inject the normal cellar. Sometimes can use the microwave therapy plum tester. So we think using all kinds of technology reasonable. Uh, utilize lama almost is in different position can also be treated except by protonation microwave ablation. The utilize lama microwave micro ablation is a simple, safe, effect, cosmetic, and reliable medical technology. That's all. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Su, for your excellent presentation. Uh, I'd like to ask the audience if they have any questions. If there's no question in the audience, we have some questions from some of the doctors uh, in the backstage. So um, one of the doctors, they want to know uh, the difference, the advantage of microbe ablation over embolization. Could you please tell us a little about this? Uh, pardon? Uh, the advantage of ablation when compared with the embolization, uterine embolization. Sorry, I can hear clearly. Can you uh, repeat in Chinese? Hello. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, the implantation may be to implant the the art, uh, of the myoma, and sometimes uh, can not to uh, to uh, destroy the whole myoma, but if we use the microwave ablation, we can uh, to puncture every area of the myoma and we can destroy the myoma uh, completely. Okay. okay. Uh, and then, yes, please go ahead. And then we can use the ultrasound. It may be more, uh, more simple and uh, maybe more, more safe uh, for the patient. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have another question for Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe, are you there? Yes, I have. Have you ever had a uh, I'd like to repeat my question in English. So have you ever uh, had any cases 
uh, that had complication of uh, uh, vaginal, uh, vaginal uh, thermal injury during the microwave ablation when you're doing transvaginal microwave ablation. Jin 不是，就经阴道效应，我们不需要放进去。经阴道效应，我们直接通过宫颈管直接把针放进去就可以了，不需要放棉球。但是这个时候它是直视的嘛，它这种情况下我们都看着，所以它不会损伤到阴道。OK
So in case that we don't have uh, MRI or contrast enhanced ultrasound facility in the department, so uh, we need to uh, keep uh, keep an eye on the uh, ultrasound imaging during the ablation to see uh, the gasification area, the vaporization, uh, and uh, the density of the ultrasound imaging to make sure we are ablating the right area with the right uh, amount of time. So that is the uh, primary uh, assessment of the microbe ablation when we're doing the ablation. Uh, that is the answer from Dr. Joe. Mm. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we have um, we have another question. Um, among uh, uterine embolization, high food and microablation. Uh, I think this is uh, this question is a little bit similar with the, the first one that we asked. Um, embolization, high food and microablation. Uh, among these three modalities, what is the best advantage of microwave? 就是我们目前的一个治疗方式对子宫肌瘤的治疗方式包括我们的筛包括我们的海扶和微波这三个治疗方式中微波最大的特点最大的优势在哪里这个问题我来回答一下因为我们单位呢其实是无论是子宫动
the patient have done the UAE and the high flu, and then the myoma also increased. At this time, they <clears throat> invite me to do the uh, microwave ablation, and uh, we also can destroy the ablation <clears throat> completely. And then the examination uh, is a source of a very good uh, effect. So I think uh, the microwave ablation maybe can do all kinds of the uh, benign uh, myoma, uh, especially the the uh, diploma case uh, location. Uh, just like the posterior uh, ward uh, myoma, we also can to do the uh, the microwave ablation and we puncture uh, the area uh, of the myoma. Uh, sometimes uh, the UAE and HIFU cannot to reach the, this uh, effect. That's uh, my opinion. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sue. Uh, I think we are also having some other questions. Uh, uh, what is the recommended antenna size for uterine fibroids and what is the recommended ablation protocol? Dr. Su, could you please take this? Uh, pardon, I can hear clearly. <laughs> I mean, what is the recommended antenna size for uterine fibroids? And uh, how many watts for how many, how long time do you ablate the lesion normally? Oh, okay. Sometimes uh, we will to ablation the myoma use the 50 watt and uh, in five minute ablation, and sometimes we will use the uh, three, uh, 30, 30 watt and three minute. Uh, we will to uh, focus on the diploma uh, myoma. And if the myoma is very close to the dental uh, example, very close to in testing and very close to the uh, endometrium, we can uh, reduce the the uh, like ablation watch and reduce the, the ablation times. So maybe we can uh, better to protect uh, this area. Okay, okay. thank you. So uh, what, uh, what antenna would you normally use? Uh, 14 gauge or 16 gauge? What is your preference, preference in your practice? Yes. Mm. Uh, sorry, I the myoma is very hard. You can you, you can use the the sink, the, the needle to puncture. Maybe it is more uh, easy. But sometimes the it is hot and uh, maybe not so easy to handle the needle. Uh, so we should uh, focus the the diploma location and diploma patient to choose the needle. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Su. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask from Dr. Joe the same question. What is your experience?我们必须讲一下
啊，一般来说效用一个五公分气流呢，一般来说呢，啊，十分钟左右，可能十分钟五十瓦就可能就够了。对，大部分时间呢就是呢，就气流呢，我们效果呢就除了血供很丰富，我们这种情况下呢，时间会延长。我们从我个人角度来说呢。不推荐呢，大功率去去削六十瓦、七十瓦这种去削，削这种太多的话呢，会导致呢局部的肌瘤啊坏死呢过度坏死以后形成钙化了以后呢无法去吸收，它后续的吸收的速度呢会减慢。对，主要是这个。嗯，好的，谢谢谢谢。So, uh, Dr. Joe just told us that in his own practice, um, in his center, they normally uh do more uh, transvaginal approach microablation than the percutaneous ablation so uh he would do 14 gauge antenna uh, with a longer length for example 20 centimeter and um, uh, about the ablation protocol he would prefer 50 watts uh, with 10 15 minutes according to different size lesion for example it's if it's a five centimeter lesion uh, Dr. Joe would use 50 watts with uh, 10 to 15 minutes according to the uh, ablation range. So um, in case it is a lesion with a rich blood, rich blood supply, he would uh, longer, he would uh, ablate the lesion for a little longer time instead of increasing the ablation watts, the power, because uh, if they use uh, higher power, uh, there might be a calcification inside the lesion that it will affect the absorption of the lesion after ablation so the he would recommend uh do not using high power ablation uh, in in these cases so that is the answer from dr joe thank you very much dr joe um actually for our q a session uh we have another special guest i'd like to invite senior consultant dr ajit kumar yadav the Secretary of Indian Society of Muscular and Interventional Radiology uh, to join our discussion. Uh, hello, Dr. Ajit. Hi, hi, Dina. How are you? Oh, we're good. Thank hello, you. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you for Thanks joining for us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, our discussion is going on. So uh, may I uh, invite you to uh, talk about your own experience with this uh, microablation on the uterine fibroids? I think you already done a couple of cases. Yeah, we have done a uh, few cases of uh, uterine fibroids. Uh, in my experience, uh, the indication in our case is because we are doing the percutaneous we are not doing through the transvaginal route because we don't have the so much length of the antenna available. In the so we usually choose the cases which are in the anterior and uh, mostly the cases which are away from the endometrial lining. And we did the ablation like in one case the 10 centimeter fibroid. So we did the ablation uh, approximately five centimeter three times in all of the lesion and after three months that regressed to approximately four centimeter and the patient still on follow up maybe around six months I will give you the full uh, detail of the patient that how much is the regression size but the effect is like uh, there is no post embolization like in uterine artery embolization uh, that's a good thing in these patients uh, the only thing required is the general anesthesia we usually doing in under the GA and also we did the hydro dissection around the uterus to prevent the ablation of the anterior wall and the small bowel that is touching the fibroid. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ajit. Um, you mentioned that you did the ablation under general anesthesia. So uh, earlier, uh, one of the doctors asked about uh, can we do the microwave ablation, the percutaneous microwave ablation under local anesthesia for uterine fibers? Do, is it possible? No, I think we should not do under the local anesthesia. Either we should give the spinal or we should do it under the GA because the heat produced causing much pain in this patient, like we are doing in the hepatic also. So in our experience, it is much pain during the uh, intraoperative time. So we should do it under the spinal or we should do it under the GA. 
we should not do it under the local nst store okay that's our personal opinion Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ajit. I'd like to ask the same question from Dr. Sue. Uh, would you, could you please tell us your experience uh, this, on this uh, Anastasia aspect? Uh, just as I said, that if the, the myoma is small and the ovulation uh, time may be short, uh, we can choose uh, the local anesthesia. Uh, but sometimes the patient may be birth pet and the uh, local anesthesia may be not enough. So we can have uh, other anesthesia measures to choose. Okay, maybe um, intro. Most time we use the uh, intro Tokyo intubation general anesthesia. I think it is maybe the better way to deal with the typical, uh, difficult cases. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. thank you, thank you. Um, I, I think Dr. Joe mentioned about intravenous sedation. 呃,做静脉麻醉加局麻还是您还能再讲讲吗?不过呢,我们做这种肌瘤的效果啊,它其实对麻醉的要求呢,相对来说低一点,但我在我们这个中心呢,主要是呢,以就是腰麻或者是做
呃，对于一些精皮来说呢，我一般只能选择了一些呃前臂的呃前臂的肌瘤，呃，靠近这个腹壁的，这时候呢我才敢去消融。如果是说呃靠近后臂的肌瘤，呃需要去在超声下面看到很不清楚的情况下，我们一般不轻易尝尝试，我们还是以保证病人的安全为主。好的，好的，谢谢周老师，我来翻译一下。嗯，好的。So actually, about which approach is better, transabdominal or transvaginal? Actually, Dr. Joe also mentioned about this in his own lecture. So, um, as a gynecologist, he would uh prefer doing ablation to uh lesions and to uh located in the anterior wall. Or if the patient's uterine position is a, a is an anterior position, uh, for these kind of uh, ablations, he would prefer precutaneous approach, and uh, also uh, some lesions. Uh, 黏膜下被压迫的，这个是适合做那个经阴做经阴道。对对对。好的好的。Okay, so um. Uh, about the transvaginal approach, actually, uh, it depends on the lesion location, uterine location. Uh, so he would normally do the ablation, do the transvaginal abla uh, ablation for the lesions at posterior wall, or if the uterine location is a posterior position. And uh, as a gynecologist doctor, he thinks he is more comfortable with transvaginal approach when doing ablation, unless the lesion is uh, is on a um, anterior position. And also if the lesion is uh, submucosal fibroids, he would, uh, which is compressing the uh, endometrium, he would also feel comfortable with transvaginal approach to make sure that he's doing the right ablation um, but he also mentioned uh, if it is uh, a, a doctor with a more skilled ultrasound, uh, uh, he's, if the doctor is more skilled in ultrasound, he might, be, uh, he might be choosing different ways. So I also want to invite Dr. Su to uh, uh, take, the, uh, take this question to tell us about his own experience. Dr. Su? Okay. Uh, our point, uh, our possible choice is to percutaneous microwave. Uh, sometimes uh, we will choose the bazano uh, to ablation, but uh, we put take the uh, needle handle area is limit, and sometimes the myoma is large. Uh, mm -hmm. The ultrasound is uh, is hard to <coughs> clearly. So uh, we think uh, from the abdominal ward may be uh, easy to do. And most time, uh, from the abdominal wall, we can handle the the need, uh, needle uh, fluidly. Uh, so now we, I think uh, sometimes we to find uh, the, the patient maybe have no uh, set uh, puncture pass, but after we establish articular A side, we can see uh, that the power is uh, separate uh, from the uterine, and then we place the also, uh, plot can hear the can find the accept uh, uh control pass. So at uh, this time we can so do the operation uh, from the uh, abdominal wall. So I think uh, most of the patient can choose the uh, uh, abdominal wall. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Su. I think uh, again it's. Uh, it's about different uh, departments, different uh, doctors with different skills. In some cases, like Dr. Joe said, he's more comfortable with transvaginal approach, uh, being an, a gynecologist, and the Dr. Sue is more comfortable with transabdominal approach. So uh, it really depends on the doctor, uh, the selection, I, I guess. So, uh, Dr. I think you've already done a transabdominal approach. Is that right? If it's uh, if it's a, a case that uh, that might require transvaginal approach, would you do it, or would you uh, choose to do transabdominal approach? Dana, hello, Doctor Ajit, you're muted. Okay, 
Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, the thing is that uh, the important thing is we should not transverse the endometrium. Whatever approach we are choosing, we sh our antenna should not go through the endometrium. That's the final thing. So whatever approach, whether it is the anterior abdominal approach, percutaneous, or whether it is the transvaginal approach, we should not transverse the endometrial lining. Okay. Always, always keep your antenna away from the endometrium because if there is heat coming from the antenna, it can damage the endometrial lining. That's the main thing we have to be kept in mind. So if it is anterior one, in the anterior myometrium on the upper side of the uterus, you can take percutaneous approach. If it is in the towards the cervical side or endocervical side or in the posterior myometrium, you can take the transvaginal route. So the the all the things depend where is the fibroid located. We should avoid doing the things that is closer to the endometrium. If someone like intramural, if it is it is in endocavitatory, it's like fibroid is impinging or it's going into the endometrium canal, we should avoid ablating these type of things. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ajit. Uh, we have um, another question from the audience. Do we need to do track ablation for the lesions and if we need to do what is the recommended power selection dr sue could you please go first thank you uh, pardon sorry uh do we need to do track ablation uh, most time we didn't need to do the the check ablation uh, it is not very simple to the the liver ablation uh, but because it is a benign tumor mm -hmm. uh, sometimes if we we put the uh, the check uh, bleeding maybe we will use the needle to puncture inside the check and then to ablation to stop the bleeding but most time uh, we need them to do it thank you okay thank you thank you uh, dr joe do you do check ablation in your own practice? Zolashi,你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你
because yeah. we are doing most of the malignant cases like in the liver. Yeah. Second, to prevent the bleeding. So, in cases of fibroid, it is a benign tumor. So, it's, there is no chances of tumor. Mm -hmm. And second one is the bleeding. Yeah, definitely, if we are going through some normal, normal myometrium, then we can do ablation up to yeah. the just the capsule of that or just the just the normal myometrium. We should not do the ablation in the fat area or in the anterior abdominal wall. So most of the our cases, we are not doing any type of ablation. Like in thyroid, like in fibroid, these are the benign tumors. So there is no need of track ablation. You just have to give the heat up to the capsule of that the cyst or the fibroid. And after that, we should stop the machine and just pull out the end. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ajit. Um, I think we've uh, covered the questions from the audience. Uh, do you have any other questions among uh, the speakers? If, uh, is there anything else that you want to discuss? Hello, Dina. Uh, uh, yes, Dr. Sue. Hello. Uh, sometimes, if the if we do the uh, post, uh, posterior ward myoma, if we should to puncture across the endometrium, uh, and we and we retard needle, we will to ablation the check. And sometimes, uh, the patient is the and the in the myosis, uh, when we retard needle, we also need to ablation the check. The other time, just like uh, I said above. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. It's about the track ablation we talked about. Okay, thank you, Dr. Su, for. for uh... So, and Dana, can I ask uh, what should be the length of the antenna for transvaginal ablation? And which kind of like guider you are using? It's, it is a metallic one or say some uh, plastic one to take inside the antenna to the Okay, I think this is a question for Dr. Joe, I believe. Uh,周老师,那个Dr.Ajitibian对您提了一个问题,就是说,我们做精英消融的时候,真的长度,您这边一般会选多长的长度是15公分还是20公分,然后除此之外就是,那个精英消融的时候需要有个套管的嘛,
I'm, I'm a little curious about the gynecologist in India. Uh, do they do ablation or um, do they just do the uh, surgery for the treatment of uterine fibroids? So then uh, this is a difficult question because uh, in India, uh, we have a different law for using the ultrasound machines. Mm -hmm. So most of the ultrasound machines can be used by the radiologist only. Some of the central gynecologists are using, but they are not too much used to use the machines for uh, doing the ablation. They actually, they to use a ultrasound machine is a difficult one. So either the radiologist has to guide you or then you have to do by, to use, to come, like you have to give time to relearn the things, how to do uh, the guiding of that antenna into the fibroid or something. So it's difficult for India actually. So most of the IRs are doing here, the ablation. Okay. So okay. I say I'm, <laughs> I'm saying because I never seen any gynecologist or any other, another physician are doing the ablation. It's a uh, totally a domain of the interventional radiologist in India. Okay, okay. And I think I think uh, it's difficult uh, because gynecologists are not doing the ablation in India. They are not interested at all. So, but the interventional radiologist in India is a growing branch, and they are more enthusiastic in doing these procedures. Okay, okay, yeah, I understand. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ajit. Um, do we have any other questions? Su Juran, Joe Lash, and Yinze Ben, you have any other questions? Yes, all. Okay. Uh, it seems like uh, that is all for today. Um, it's we are, uh, yeah, a little ahead of the time. Uh, Doctor Ajit, is there anything that we need to discuss, or uh, we can dismiss now? I think uh, most of the things are discussed in uh, ablation. Do we have some some antenna that we can use for endometrium ablation? Endometrium ablation, we have some antennas that are being tested, that are being uh, clinically tried in China, but it, we, are not plan we are not yet um, promoting them in overseas markets. So if you're interested, we might be able to provide you with some information after the meeting. Okay. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Okay, so um, I think that is all for the today. And if the uh, audience, if you have any more questions that you want the uh, our speakers to uh, get back to after the meeting, please send us to our email info email address. Um, so we will get back to you later. And um, so um, today's session is coming to an end. Uh, I would I want to thank all of you for your participation, and uh, we appreciate our speakers and our guest speakers uh, for their excellent work. And um, thank you very much. Thank you all for your time. Uh, we hope to continue our cooperation in the future and have a good, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Good night, thank you, Ajit. Bye. Bye. Bye.谢谢苏主任谢谢周老师谢谢谢谢辛苦你了辛苦你辛苦了不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不行不